Okay, what do PERT skills have to do with calculus? In PERT, we evaluate a lot of stuff. So we're going to evaluate f of x equals absolute value of x plus x squared over 3 minus x. We're just going to plug in that negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And negative negative 3 is positive 3. So this is going to equal 3 plus 9 over 3 plus 3. That's going to equal 12 over 6, which simplifies to just plain old 2. Same process here. Notice it's the same numbers. So in calculus, we have to find the limit instead of just evaluate. You have to evaluate in calculus, but you also do other stuff like this limit process. So the absolute value of something plus something squared over 3 minus something. And that's something in this case is going to be negative 3. We already did it. So it give us the same result. The absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Over 3 minus negative 3 is 3 plus 3, which is 6. 12 over 6 equals 2. Find the slope between two points. Um, slope formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. This shows up in PERT a lot. They're big one slope. So I like to set up my little template that follows the formula. And then I'm going to take y sub 2, which is 6, minus y sub 1, which is negative 2. Um, and then 9 minus 7. Not using the calculus for this, uh, not using the calculator for this, even though I could. It would be nice, but this is PERT practice, so we want to stay away from the technology. Minus minus changes to plus. Minus minus changes to plus. So that's going to actually equal 6 plus 2, which is 8, over 9 minus 7, which is 2. And that's going to equal 4 when you simplify it. Average rate of change at AROC, average rate of change. So what we do with average rate of change, this is not a coordinate. This is an x value. This is an x value. And we're going to use this formula, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. <clears throat> so we already have our x value of 9 and 7. Now we need to figure out what our y values are. We need to figure out what our y values are. So we come over here. f of x back in the old days was y. So now we're going to do f of 9, f of 9 equals 9 squared minus 2. That's 81 minus 2. Ooh, no calculator's a little rough. That's 79. Then we're going to do f of 7, f of 7, f of 7 equals 7 squared minus 2. That's going to give me 49 minus 2. That would give me 47. I've got to do my arithmetic. <clears throat> per practice, no calculator. So 79 minus 47. That's 2. That's 3. That's going to equal 32 over 2. That equals 16. It's a little rough. I want to rewrite this with a negative exponent. <clears throat> I like to look at it with a little story, a little analogy, a little parable. Um, so if I have a house and I'm partying and I have people upstairs, some of them got a bad attitude. Some of them have a positive attitude. People are partying downstairs. It's a two-story house. Some people are partying on the first floor with a bad attitude and a positive attitude. And what we want to do is we want to change the floor. Instead of kicking them out of the house, I'm just going to ask them to go upstairs or downstairs depending upon their attitude. So you see here, Alex has a bad attitude negative attitude. So I tell Alex to go downstairs. She goes downstairs and her attitude changes. So that negative attitude gets sent downstairs. We got Beatrice. She got a positive attitude. So she gets to stay where she, where she is. If I were to move her down, that would upset her and she'd get a negative attitude. Then I have Christian over here with a negative attitude. Christian with a negative attitude. So I send him upstairs. When he goes upstairs, his attitude changes. I really don't need that positive one. I really don't need that positive one. But if you want to put it there, that's okay. Now I have uh, Devin downstairs, Devin downstairs, Devin's downstairs, and Devin's got a positive attitude, so he gets to stay where he is. Now I'm done. Everybody's partying with a positive attitude. No negative exponents, all positive exponents. Now I have the house party, 
but I have a power to a power. I don't like to say distribute, but I'm going to put that negative 2 power times each one of these exponents inside the quantity. So this is going to equal x to the negative 2, y to the negative 4, over z to the negative 6. Now I have to rewrite this house party without any negative exponents. I want all positive exponents. I have Xavier upstairs here with a negative attitude. So x to the negative 2 goes downstairs and his attitude changes. I have Yahir upstairs with a negative attitude. Send him downstairs. And when he goes downstairs, his attitude changes. I got Miss Zellin downstairs with a negative attitude. And when I send her upstairs, her attitude changes. Now everybody's happy. Positive attitudes. In calculus, we have the power rule, and we can't really use the power rule when it's written as a fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this with a negative exponent. So I'm going to bring him upstairs, and when I do, that's going to give me x to the negative 3 power. This is to the first. I'm going to bring him upstairs, and when I do, that's going to give me x to the negative 1 power. And that's really useful because now if I want to take the derivative of this, I can. The derivative would be negative 3x, and then I would subtract 1 to the negative 4th. This, I have to go through a different rule other than the power rule to find the de derivative of that. So if I bring it up and rewrite it with a negative exponent, I can take the derivative quite rapidly. Negative 1x to the negative 2. All I want you to do is just rewrite it with a negative exponent. That's the skill we're looking for today. To rewrite this with a negative exponent. To rewrite this with a negative exponent. Thank you.